Thank you, Member Chilliwack Kent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am going to try to follow my friend. <laughs> um, parks bring families closer together. I have the pleasure in Chilliwack Kent of living just steps away from one of our BC parks. Um, and it's, it's a very, very big privilege to live so close to a protected area. We know that it improves our health, it improves our mental health, um, it can provide, they can provide new cultural experiences, they protect species, ecosystems, these things that are found nowhere else in the world. And we have visitors that come when, when times are safe to, to experience these things in these parks that we protect. I am happy to rise to speak in favor of this bill and especially because these amendments you know, will establish a new Class A park um, in the Cowichan Valley, as was just mentioned. It will rename two provincial parks. One of them is in Chilliwack, Kent, and I'll talk at length about that, I believe. Um, it will add over 2,200 hectares of land to, the, to nine of our existing parks and one conservancy. It will modify the boundaries of five parks this bill will provide three parks with official plans, which are mapped boundaries that are more accurate and understandable uh, and practical than written descriptions. We are expanding our parks and our protected areas and systems by establishing a new provincial park on southern Vancouver Island, the first in over 20 years. And through this, uh, and Mr. Speaker, uh, one of my friends has already discussed this um, in a beautiful way. I'll be rewatching later for pronunciation. <laughs> The new, this new park will protect a vital ecosystem important to the Cowichan tribes and aid in the conservation of threatened species such as the Roosevelt elk, western screech owl, and northern goshawk. Through these changes, we are expanding our park system and recognizing the cultural and historical significance of these places through a renaming process. Renaming these parks is important. We hear that it's important directly from the people who are providing these names. We are hearing that this is important through consultation. And when I speak with the chiefs in my area, or the councils in my area, I hear that it's important. It's a good step. It is not the final solution. Acknowledging Indigenous place names allows park visitors to connect with the history and culture of our province. And it allows us to learn, uh, Mr. Speaker, one of the benefits that I have, I, I live and serve um, on traditional Stalo territory. And I have the privilege of meeting with several different bands, several different tribes, several different groups um, who are all connected under that Stalo tradition. And what I get to learn is unending and I haven't even scratched the surface. I am very lucky that there are multiple chiefs who are willing to share with me and who are willing to teach me and give me pieces of information that will help inform um, my work and my perspective and the lens I use to do my work and to serve. This supports the ongoing reconciliation because it allows other people to see and recognize and hear the names and the language. So the Stalo people, um, and definitely where I serve in Chilliwack, Kent, the language, spoke, the language is Halkamalem, which is very important because so are the names. So the new name for Chilliwack Lake Park is Skotsakal. So this is not a name that most people have heard. And when people ask, what is this? What does this mean? And they hear that, that what it means is sacred lake. And they hear that this is a Halkamalem language. And they hear that this Halkamalem language and the Stalo people and the traditions in Chilliwack, Kent and Chilliwack, as well as the surrounding areas, talk about important places, important places to visit, important places to see, important places to understand about the ancestors and about the people who have been turned to stone and the stories that are there. And that there are available resources from Stalo people. Um, and there's a resource center where people can take tours and they can explore the river, uh, rivers and they can explore the lakes and they can see these important places and hopefully more and more with these important names. With the names that have been used hopefully before they were changed to Chilliwack Lake Park. Um, honorable speaker, we've seen how important parks are to our physical and mental health as we've moved through COVID. 
I know, as I mentioned, living close to a, a provincial park, that it was accessed often and by many um, in order to get out. These are our kids, but these are also, this is everyone, everyone around. Um, my friend, Mr. Speaker, did mention that Cultus Lake Park, uh, also in Chilliwack, Kent, has access, an accessible campground. Um, so really allowing everybody to, to be able to access. Protecting and expanding parks is important to the people who live there locally so that they can continue accessing. It's important to the small businesses, the tourist-related businesses, and the services around. So it's important to the economy. Because we know um, that we live in a place that people want to come to, that they want to experience. But we also know that we have to protect those areas. Chilliwack Lake Provincial Park, for some context, in case you haven't visited yet, um, open invitation, um, is a pristine escape from the city. It's characterized by a valley bottom lake surrounded by old growth forest and bountiful subalpine and alpine ridges. The clear and sparkling Chilliwack Lake, which there are several pictures of where you can see the bottom, is ideal for motorboating, canoeing, kayaking, swimming, or fishing. There's a wide sandy beach, and it has stunning views on all sides as the fir forest rises into mountain peaks and ice fields that surround. The park is great for families to explore and play, and there are 40 kilometers of trails that provide opportunities for hiking, bird and wildlife viewing, and nature appreciation. I'm going to say, Honourable Speaker, it's always farther than it seems. <laughs> whether you're on the road driving up or whether you're on a trail and you think you're almost back at the car. It's always farther, but it is so beautiful. The park also has a playground and 146 front country campsites. Those seeking wilderness camping experience can access the back country camps located at Green Drop Lake, Lindemann Lake, Flora Lake, and Radium Lake. Renaming this park, as I mentioned, is an important step forward in our ongoing reconciliation efforts with Indigenous people in Chilliwack, Kent, and across British Columbia. And this renaming of this park to Scotesackle is only one example. If you leave the lake and follow the river, we're building an elementary and middle school. And the name of that elementary middle school is going to be Stitan Lalem Totilt. And so this is a house of learning, and Coast Salish, Stalo people, the Chilquaic tribe, this is all a coming together, bringing this, the language and bringing the names of these places that are important. The renaming of parks to include indigenous names will also, as my friends have mentioned, aid in the implementation of the United Nations Declaration of, on the Rights of Indigenous People, uh, specifically Article 13. So the name changing from Chilliwack Lake Park to Scott Sackle, and I'm going to keep saying it so that people get used to hearing it, so that people use it. <laughs> the new name, as I mentioned, reflects the Halkamalan place, which is meant sacred lake, and this is the ancestral homeland of the Chilquaic, it's not spelt that way, but it sounds like Chilquaic, uh, tribe. The lake is an important water body in the cultural landscape of the Chilquaic tribe. And that's an understatement because the water in general we know is important um, culturally. Honorable speaker, for context, and in case anyone is now, uh, inter their interest is now piqued to coming and visit visiting the new Scotsackle Chilliwack Lake Park. Um, it's located about 150 kilometers east of Vancouver in the upper Chilliwack River Valley. And as I mentioned, it's a beautiful, beautiful setting. Some of my friends also mentioned partners that help us take care of these areas, of these protected areas. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention two groups specifically that are from Chilliwack, the Chilliwack-Kent, Chilliwack area. So the first that I'd like to mention um, is the Chilliwack Vetter River Cleanup Society. I've mentioned them in this house before. But recently on BC Rivers Day, on September 26th, they organized a cleanup, and this is the area that they were, they were in. So if you don't know, the Chilliwack Lake is connected to, a, to the systems of the rivers and the Chilliwack slash Vetter River, depending on what point you're at. 
um, is, is attached to that, is part of that. So they organized a COVID safe event. There were over 60 volunteers there, and they even offered prizes for the volunteers provided by Picky Go Refills and Mount Waddington's Outdoors. So this was an excellent local event, grassroots initiative to take care of the waters that we love so much, the areas that are protected and that we need to sustain so much. The second group uh, is Kindness Chain Chilliwack. An honorable speaker, I've mentioned them as well in the house. When people do good work, they tend to do it repeatedly. <laughs> so on August 1st, they organized a cleanup of Lindemann Lake, which is part of that park. So what happened was that all the volunteers, uh, the pictures showed about two dozen, I believe. Um, the volunteers were led through a hike by Courtney and Mike from Vetter Mountain Adventure Company. They hiked up and enjoyed the beautiful scenery. And as they hiked down, they cleaned up. So really a fantastic initiative there by Kindness Chain Chilliwack as well. Honorable speaker, I don't have many more comments because my friends have been so thorough. Um, I am very excited about Scotsackle. Everyone got that? <laughs> Um, and I'm excited that the Chilquaic tribe was, was part of protecting this space, renaming this space, um, and taking back the name of this space uh, with the Halkamalem language. So one of, if you go onto Stalo webpage, um, if you take a look at what leads their work, um, they have this at the top of their page. And I think it's very obvious in the work that's done across the region, um, individually by different tribes or nations, um, as well as collectively. It says, this is our land. We have to look after everything that belongs to us. And it was explained to me that they take that as, as core, that's central, that's the teaching, that's important. And so honoring that and understanding that right now, a change in language, a change in word, a change in name is what's being offered, is, what, is what's happening. There is more work to do, and I am so grateful that I have so many who can teach me so much in Chilliwack, Kent, on how we move forward. In the meantime, these beautiful and important waters and areas are protected, and their name reflects the importance that they hold for the people who have had that as an important cultural space for so much longer than we've been here. So, Honorable Speaker, I just wanted to be able to say Skutsakal one more time <laughs> so that you'll all remember it. And when you come to Chilliwack, Kent, um, I'm happy to introduce you around, show you. It's a long drive. Bring very comfortable boots. The, like I said, the hike is longer than it looks. Um, but the waters are worth it. So, thank you very much. Thank you.